We're always trying to get RGB signals into CRTs that were made in North America that never had RGB. So now, thanks to this amazing kit from Sector Sunthar, we're actually able to add RGB easily to a lot of sets. Today I have a Toshiba CRT that has been fully restored and is a great candidate for this RGB MUX kit. I will get into the details of why that is later on in the video, but for now, let's jump into adding this amazing piece of hardware and getting the best out of that old CRT. Might not get a zap since I've covered it in dielectric grease. Oh yeah, little one. This chassis is from a Toshiba 14AF43. I've already restored this board um, and now we're gonna get ready and install this MUX kit and to do that we're going to need to remove some coupling capacitors and I think a couple resistors probably in this area of the board. These are the components we're going to remove. R142, 143, 141 and then those three capacitors and then we'll have a spot to inject um, our RGB signal into the OSD and kind of hijack that pathway. All right, those six components are right here. I've actually ma marked them with a Sharpie just to know which to remove because you've got three right here in a row and then you've got this capacitor on over here. You need to leave this one that's in the middle of them. And then you've got the two components up here, a resistor and a capacitor. Look at that, that one just came right off. See that? Came right off easily. Okay, it's pretty good for the first one. There we go. We're not putting any stress on this board when we do this because we're basically getting both pads hot enough to keep the um, solder molten for just a quick partial second. And then in doing that, we're able to just remove the component. You don't want to force it. That will tear a trace on this board. Okay, this one's going to come off even easier, see? There we go. Got a nice couple horns left there from the solder. Let's just get rid of that. Get rid of that. We still have our capacitor right here. So we've got the three out right there. We've got the one out right there. And don't worry, that's the dark things that you see that have appeared, that's just burn up flux because there's flux in the core of the solder. And then there's flux in the braided solder wick okay so that's the bottom four we just need to get these two up top right here and then we'll be ready to clean up the spot this came right off
Another one gone. And there we go. I did get a little fresh solder up top here, but that's okay. We can clean that up. Okay, well, let's just go over here, and look, I'm not actually, what I'm trying to do is kind of float this above those spots. I'm not actually, uh, I'm not actually like applying pressure to anything on the board. Okay, let's just add a little isopropyl alcohol here, clean this area. This big swab. And let's see what it looks like underneath here. I don't think that's a real trace or anything. Oh, there is a trace. It goes under there. So you have to be very precise because you don't want to cut any traces. So it's always good to just take a second clean it. I'm just scraping off the stickier flux residue there that's left over mostly from the solder just clean all that up again I don't want to scratch even the board really this is all about loosening up anything that's kind of stuck itself to that board you can see we still got a little flux left over right here. That's okay. It's not going to hurt anything. Uh, I just like to have the boards really cleaned up. But there we go. So we've got these all removed. So that's a high resolution photo of uh, what we're going to do here. We're going to install red, green, blue blanking and then an additional ground all down in here so we will install blue here green will go here red here and actually the blanking is here so it's a little bit out of the screen let me move that around a little bit there we go and then finally that additional ground is going to go right here Let's go ahead and introduce some fresh solder. And then we can install our conductors. Well, we've already got a spot there. So that's blue, blanking, red. Now we're going to do green. Actually, this is blanking. This is ground. Bring in these conductors, and I'm going to start probably underneath, just to be simpler, make it easier. These are already tinned up. Hopefully I can just get it to stick on there nice. There's red. Let's go with blue next because it's a little bit up there. Let's try to get it. Gotta have these tips nice and trimmed down so you don't, of course, short anything nearby. Ok, 
Okay, there's blue. That's the ground wire. Now let's get that green under there. Let's see, you can go. Shoot, I might just need to put the green one first, but I don't think that's going to be a problem. I am going to trim the edge of that. There we go. Let's get green. I realize that went out of focus, but there you can see the green. And then finally, we will install blanking down here. There we go. I'm going to let it sit for a second. And then we'll clean it up a little bit, let it get nice and cooled down on its own because I don't really want to come in there and hit that with cold isopropyl alcohol till it cools down a little bit and now we can do it done. And man, everything's looking really good on that install. That's going to be nice and clean. So you can see that's all in there good. You can tell nothing's really shorted out. Everything looks nice and pretty in there. We just want to clean it up. Nothing there. Just gonna run. There we go. Really like the way that one came out. We're going to move up the board to the AV inputs on the back of the set. And I'm going to use, let's call them terminals back here. And I'm going to inject my remaining signals into the set like this. So if we look back here, Right in this spot, right where my, there we go, right here I'm going to inject the purple cable from the kit, which is going to be the audio ground. Then next over here, I'm going to inject the black cable, which is the video ground or just a common ground on the scarred head. Right here is where I'm going to inject the sink or the yellow cable. So we'll attach it there. And then over on this side is where we're going to add our two audios. We're going to do the gray cable right here, which is audio left and audio right, which is the white cable will be installed right here. All the cables conductors have been installed. I'm going to show you a couple things I did. And of course I did have to add a couple dabs of everyone's favorite hot glue just to secure the cables and keep them from shifting. I've bridged this point which is just a ground point right there to secure give it a secure holder for that cabling to right there. So all that's been installed again there's all our conductors installed our two audios our two grounds and then our composite video input for sync. All right here's the chassis that I've installed and this will slip in between the RF input right there and the S video input and then we can connect that into the I think it's gonna be right in this area over here we'll connect the SCART input like that so that way it all fits nicely inside the shell and it doesn't crimp or anything all right, here it is, finished. I've gone through and first off, 
soldered all these points, welded all that up there in that receptacle. Same thing down here with the scarred head. You can see all that's been soldered in. And uh, I'm going to clean it up one more time, but I wanted to show you first. This is the build out. Now, for this particular one, uh, you know, resistors, it doesn't matter which direction you install them, okay? The only thing that's directional and important is this diode. This is all information that you should have with your guide, like it came with my guide. So if we look up here, the kit up here explains what goes in each spot right there and what each does. So for this kit, we're going to have a jumper on R11, and that's just the blanking resistor. Sometimes you'll have to have a resistor here for this. You just short it. The diode is installed in R9, and it's pointing towards this receptacle, see? And then you'll see that my inline color resistors are actually backwards on the other side. I'll explain that in a second. Uh, next to that, we have R's 1, 2, and 3. Those are 75 ohm terminators. And then we have 1,000 ohm terminators for left and right audio here. And if we flip this around, these are the three inline resistors for color. Uh, I only had 1,000 ohms in the shop here. I'm not sure that 1,000 ohms will work. Could produce a dim color picture, uh, I think. So I'm going to test these 1,000 ohms because my particular set actually calls for 750 ohm resistor uh, in that spot for the colors. So we'll see if it actually prevents the color from coming through altogether. And if it does, then I'll need to order those resistors and replace them. If it's not a big deal, then the picture will probably come through and it'll work fine. We will see shortly. Okay, let's run our test. Power the set on for the first time. I've got RGB coming in, but I've not actually got it turned on yet. I just wanted to see if the set would come into color stream mode normally, and it appears to be doing that. Let's see what happens when I turn on this. It sounds like it's getting a signal. Oh, yeah. Look at that. So, those resistors don't seem to matter too much at all. And it looks like we got a good picture. Awesome. That's straight RGB coming from the console. You don't have to have any switches with these Mux mods, but all right, great. Let's uh, let this thing run for a little bit, then we'll check it out a little more. Now, as I promised at the beginning of the video, I was going to explain to you why would you even be interested in adding uh, RGB to a set like this that already has component video. I know I'm going to get this question asked to me, and most likely it's the people that jumped off early in the video. So this is the answer. This television does do a weird uh, component processing on the video where it starts to push through red and bleed through a little bit. And I do have a video that I did last month with a great example of this. I'll link to it right up in the top here. You can check that out. It's the very first restoration there. I show examples of how this bleed happens and it, it goes away once you actually bypass all that component video processing and just go straight RGB. So that's the deal. Uh, not every set is going to benefit as great as this one. Basically the set has to do a lot of weird stuff over component video, add some color correction or something like that that's with the set. And uh, there's other sets that do a good job with component video that you really won't see a great benefit. But for these Toshibas that are the AFs, that are um, that look just like the model in this one it's really good to try that RGB mod now probably the trickiest part of uh, this install besides all that work we did on those SMD components is going to be installing the scarred head and using a Dremel so the rest of uh, this installation I'm going to show you what I do how I walk through that and uh, you can see what it looks like at the end and how I install the scarred head I'm going to have to install the scart head somewhere, and I'm going to go in the back here. I'm sure it's still dirty, but I'll clean it after I get this fitted. So I've measured it out. This is where I'm going to take it out. Now this plastic is um, 
kind of tricky to deal with. There's a couple ways you can do this. If you have a Dremel, which I do, I will be cutting most of this with a Dremel and then I'll come back and file it down by hand to try to shape it uh, for the exact size and then we'll need to drill some holes after that. And I'm going to stay inside this exterior and I'd rather have it a little smaller and then just be able to shape it by hand with my hand filing. So I made a little stencil, I apologize for the beeping outside, but that way I could kind of trace it out here on this side. And then I just used my Dremel and cut it out roughly like that. And I'm, I'm going to take a set of files that I have and I'm going to reduce that, uh, you know, back up here. I'm going to shave this all down so that the scart head will fit right in there and then we'll get some holes put in it. Here we have the carved out scart input. So you can just mount the screws right there and the input right there and it won't interfere with anything, should fit nicely. I'm going to go do that and then we can install the back shell and close up the CRT. Alright, here we have it. Look at that. That's a pretty good installation. I mean, it's not perfect like factory made, but pretty good for hand, hand carved. If you look inside, there it is. Everything should be nice and sta safe and secure in there. And then we can just plug our cable into the top. All right, this is actually coming together quite nicely. You can see what I've done. I've got it, uh, the cable. See how it goes all the way over there to the scart head. And then it comes out the scart head and I've got it connected over here to this cable to keep some management so it will not get in front of that input board right there, those inputs. and interfere with that at all so all I should be able to do is close this thing right up put some screws in it well I got too hasty and I forgot about something back here I need to actually cut out this piece of plastic right here this guide because it's pushing up against my bundle of cables and not letting the board get in there now it'll be fine with this other guide right here but this one's got to be clipped out and I'll just clip it out with these um, snips right here just like this all right there we go so you have filed that down and cut that out hopefully that will leave enough space now for this to get in there let's try it all right well it's all pieced back together and it works wonderfully super quiet set you know Fully, fully restored that actually does help it and there's that scart input in use you can tell nothing else is plugged in there's no tricks going on we just have a finished RGB modded Toshiba set it just looks phenomenal I'm gonna take this next moment as an opportunity to say thank you to Sector Sunthar uh, first off, for having an awesome website to have tutorials for RGB MUX mods. So if you think your TV may be RGB MUXable or moddable, you can check out Sunthar's website. I'll put a link in the description of the video here. And uh, you can see what the plan would be for you to get your set RGB modified. And also, there are some sets that cannot be RGB modified. But thanks for putting together the website, and also thank you for putting together these amazing kit packages. Um, and look, if you're interested in getting an RGB Mux mod done to your TV set, and you live in the United States, then uh, you can possibly commission me to do so. All you need to do is make sure your set is RGB moddable first at Sector Sunthar's website. And if it is, then you can just click the other link in the description for this video to my Patreon account and sign up there to get CRT services done and uh, that includes restorations and modifications like the RGB MUX mod done in this video. Finally, thank you to you for spending your time today with me. Uh, if you did enjoy this content, please do me a favor and click the like button. I know this was just a pretty straightforward tutorial. I tried to get a lot of interesting views and, and close camera points for you. So if you have any feedback on this, please do leave a comment in the comment section. And I'll see you all next time with some more retro content.